All right. Go away, Molly. Okay. Let me get my wood fired oven going up. Did I say gas oven? I've got to fire it up and use it. Uh, yeah, I embedded a gas oven in the wall here instead of a a regular oven. It's it's like a it's like a wood wood fire oven, but it's run by gas. Now, Eli, you're a little bit late to the party here, so I'm just going to let you guys out at three o'clock, three a.m. And I've had. No, I did get rest. I went to bed pretty early, so these are fishermen's hours. And uh, no, I know there's some of you who actually worry. And the time that you haven't seen me, a uh, couple of those days, I did get a good sleep. But, you know, it's sort of like, uh, where's my Psalms? And, and you've got to, in a sense, forgive me for, like, uh, my eyes are not even really open yet. And uh, I'm, uh, I was on a Psalm of Asaph. Psalm 77. And I realized, you know, I got a request on Reverb Nation. And the guy said, if you're ever going to sing more psalms, because I put up uh, Kel's, you know, from our Sword and Dove album, the, uh, the song, uh, Psalm 18, called, well, what do we call that? We call that... Uh, Oh, gosh, it's just really early in the morning. Uh, pace 18. <laughs> it's 306. Or 307. And uh, I'm wandering here. And I'm, you know, I've given so much thought to the thing that's happening at this point. And this is just going to be one of those Z audios where <laughs> rather than get prepared and then go, the mic, audio verite, it just gets put on right away. And instead of sleeping a few more hours, it was time to get this done because we had things to say about... Uh, the temperature outside is about four degrees. If that, it's probably zero. Um, since we shored up the property here with stone around the around the house here, um, it holds the heat. It used to be drafty, kind of, you know, and, and the heater wouldn't completely work. You'd have to put on the uh, the the stove, uh, the the wood stove. And uh, it's uh, probably to save money, that'd be a good idea. But it's not really necessary, which is the first time that's been. And I've really seen the value of rock. One of the walls in my studio is, have you seen a picture? of There's a rock background. It's, there's one wall that's rock and the others are clay. And uh, And then the surfaces are... There's a natural wood ceiling uh, without a lot of lacquer on it. It's just more kind of breathing. And then on the floor, it's, there's a, a, a rug on a, uh, on, a, on a wood floor. And then it's pretty stuffed. And, I, I, you know, it's real cozy. It's really nice to be able to go in there at 2.30 in the morning when you have an idea about how to fix something in a mix done that a lot. I did that uh, on the uh, on the album quite a bit. I there was a lot of midnight oil burned on that one because I was under a kind of a learning curve with uh, with having a new studio and then you know just getting used to that and then having to in a sense double and in some cases triple mix the the song. So the the album took three times longer than it should have, mainly because maybe not three times, but you know uh, at least. It should have been about a six-month project, and it's now going on about a year. So I almost double the time it should have, but that's 
not anyone's fault. It's just that there's a studio that has to be, you know, honed and learned. And, you know, then you could go beyond where, where I was before with the uh, material. I could go well beyond it, but there was a commitment to, to that. So the, the album really helped me to learn and it will be out soon. We just have to, um, you know, soon, like any week, it'll be available for you to hear all the tracks and, and download what you want from CD Baby and what you don't want. Um, I would suggest downloading the entire album. Just pay the 12 bucks or whatever it is and download the whole album. Because all the songs that are there, it's very tight. It's like the best of the best material. I know we had a little thing about a couple of songs that were going to be in there and then I guess they're not going to be. But that was all part of the process. In other words, it was home. Not, not just everything we came up with goes in there. It's just, it's edited down to the best of the best. And uh, so it's 11 at this point, 11 very strong uh, songs, you know, and, 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 and those were also honed and there were other, other music that was uh, going around that, that could have been used that was rejected because it, it really you know, um, wasn't there. There was, there was, you know, there was an editing process and I believe I'm a firm believer in the process. You know, you don't go back. You just keep going forward. And, um, so I, I feel that what God has given us here, cause he's given us this music, gave us the opportunity to mix it and, and to, to make it really resound, um, mightily. And I think it's, uh, you know, and, 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 uh, a lot of Kel's songwriting, has been <clears throat> just really superb and, uh, you know, really a lot of emotional hooks and a lot of just, just emotion that, that hooks you in and spiritual warfare. So it's very much Sword and Dove. That's a good title for the album because um, that's what it really seems like to me. It seems like there's extremes, uh, but then they're all cohesive. It's kind of like the Lord. You know, and then and, and it's all inspired from from the word. You know, the word's the most powerful thing you can do if you if you're a musician. You know, the word comes from music. The Psalms are called song. They're songs. They're just lyrics for song. I was looking at Psalm seventy eight. It's a huge. That's the biggest psalm I think there is, and. Um, you know, it goes on and on explaining, you know, almost going through the whole history of, of, of Israel and then how God's going to rebuke, you know. And I was thinking today, yeah, that would be epic. If you just took that one psalm and put that to music, and I and now that I'm saying it, I'll probably screw it up or I won't do it. But, you know, I was just thinking, yeah, how cool that would be to sing that out, <clears throat> given, you know, with English and whatever way you're going to do it. And um, what kind of textures you would want, you know, like the obvious one would be to have dramatic music that uh, that sort of dramatizes each meaning of each lyric. I'd say no, no, because see, the way it's done in the temple is a cantor will sing, you know, the the the, the word. The word is sung, and. You know, and it will be done with with just a little background drone. You know, it, it doesn't. It's not, or nothing. There doesn't need to be. You know, it's you know acapella. There doesn't need to be music attached. So I would say, any music underneath it would have to be minimal because, you know, the voice would be the song. So that's an interesting thought. You know, to put. The, the psalms to me, and not, not all like that. I mean, you know, we put Psalm 18 to uh, to a pretty nice groove, and it just worked out great. So I'm really pretty happy with everything in that regard. And then, you know, I'm not, I'm, I, I don't know. I guess what the issue is now is, you know, the horror of, the horror of the Antichrist, the horror of tribulation. And so many unable to cope, I just pray in the name of Jesus that people would, the Lord, you'll just give me the lead on all the things we've talked about the last few days. And you'll lead the words out of me.
two willing ears, ears that can hear and receive comfort, joy, confidence, and peace. In Jesus' name, amen. I just stand on the, the word of God, you know, that, that what was meant for harm is good for those who believe. That's like the anthem song of our album. There's, there's, I don't think I've shared that. That's, uh, you, know, you haven't heard that. That's, that's one of the, the strong songs on the album that's coming out. So what, the, the, the central theme is what was meant for harm is good for those that believe. And, and, I, and I firmly stand on the idea that when we're weak, he is strong. I firmly stand on the idea that the Lord loves inquiries from his children, and loves you to talk to him. This is a time... Yeah, I told you it's gonna it's gonna start flowing. It's gonna start happening. That's why I had the mic on because I if I stage it like hello, ladies and gentlemen, da da da. You know, it's it's it, you know it, it. I could just talk and make it seem like it's flowing when it's not. It has to be like a real natural stream. You know, all these little droplets becoming a stream, becoming a uh, 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 you know becoming a little river, becoming a raging river, becoming a waterfall. It has to be like that. So the word of God becomes a comfort. You know, when we're weak, when we're alone, I know a lot of lonely people, not going to mock them like the Beatles did. You know, I mean, I, it's, it's really hard for me because, you know, the, the, the Beatles had such great music and such great mixes phenomenal sound beyond anything really but the message it wasn't exactly the right message it's like come on get on the magical mystery tour it's like no i don't want to go on the magical mystery tour i mean okay well then you're not cool and you're you know you're uh oh now you see the dogs want to come in trish could you take care of that please It's hard to get going because there's so many things going on. I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear to me. <laughs> oh, dear. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord, and my sore ran in the night and ceased not, and my soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained, and my spirit was overwhelmed, Selah. Thou holdest mine eyes waking. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old and the years of ancient times. I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever, and will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean, gone forever? Does his promise fail forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up the tender mercies, Selah? And I said, this is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the word works of the Lord. Surely I will remember the wonders of old. I will meditate also of all thy work and the things of thy doings. The way, O God, is in the sanctuary, who is so great a God as our God. Thou art the God that does wonders, that has declared thy strength among the people. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. The waters saw the, thee, O God, the waters saw thee. They were afraid. The depths were also troubled. The clouds poured out water. The sky sent out a sound. Thine arrows went abroad. The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lightened the world. The earth trembled and shook. All of this is sound. All of this is a song. 
all of this is sound. The clouds poured out water and the skies went out, the skies sent out a sound. When the waters saw God, they were afraid, and the depths of the waters, the deepest part of the sea, was completely troubled at the sight of the awesome Lord. I was one day driving and came into contact with the Lord, and I trembled and I felt terrible and I felt overwhelmed and inadequate and 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 uh vexed to my soul it was a it was a troublesome experience I was I was shaken shaken and I couldn't handle it very long other times like when when I was in the presence of the Shekinah and I jumped in there and I had no body but I was me and I was as happy as could be forever and ever. I saw myself in eternity forever and ever, and I was just as joyous as the sun. In all these words here that are spoken here, remember this is also a song. The words are not random. The meanings, the sounds that you're hearing uh, are communing with your soul. A, we are communicating in another dimension. We must be in this dimension. Where the Psalms will put you in that dimension. That's why, they're, that's why they're in the Bible. You need comfort, then you can go to these Psalms, and a song is sung to your heart that will calm you down. You know, this is so typical of the structure, like, God, have you forgotten me forever? Am I just, you know, that part, the Lord wants to see that part from us, where we, we, we all but give it up. We don't have confidence anymore. How many of you have confidence? You're, you're, you're worried. Lord, have you forgotten us? And you take it to the Lord. Father, have you forgotten our struggle? Do you see what's going on here on the earth? We may just be gunned down, you know. Lord, are you going to, uh, how long are you going to let this go on? See, there's that. And then there is, nothing is like you, God. The, 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 the waters tremble. The people tremble. The, the mountains tremble at your presence. You know, you, you are the God that made everything that is made. You are the God that's in everything that is made. And so, therefore, I will take comfort because you are my God. You are my Father. So I will be at peace because I know that Whatever you're doing, it's going to be okay with me because I belong to you. I am yours. I bow down to you. I submit to you. I submit it all to you. you I give you my life. And in exchange, I understand that you take it and give me comfort. And then you fill me with your spirit because I allow you in because I want you there rather than me, I want as much God in me as possible in Jesus' name. Jesus being God. God, Jesus is really six of one, half dozen of the other. I, I know that's something that has to be revealed to people that the real king, the real king is not Barack Hussein Obama. He is a pervert who... Um, uh, you know, and I, I guess Satan must be proud of himself for choosing a guy like this, but it was all done through, you know, perversion, corruption, um, corrupt in business, uh, uh, well-known homosexual that was frequenting the bathhouses. And, you know, I, I mean, I hate to have a discussion about God and then go to, but you can see this King, how tawdry, how, how vile, how, how profane, you know what I mean? And and how how the world is like that where they worship him, you know, and and you know, we've never seen this before in, in our lifetimes, you know, but we're seeing it and to see him glory in it and to see man who's just basically covered in dung, uh pl applaud himself as being a god. I, I have no idea how you get to that point. It it's impossible. It's Unless somehow you your mind wasn't your own. Ah, well, that's 
perhaps the issue. And I understand how hard it is for you to be here to watch that. It's got to be terribly devastating to watch this day by day and to watch people who out of ignorance uh, make the same mistakes over and over again and who are just looking to, to have a pop, to feel good, to have their ego stroked. And then they're okay for a while and then they crash again and they need to be lifted up. So they go, you know, they go join their group where, you know, they go to their club, they go to their, you know, where they're, where no matter what level they're on, they'll be lifted up. Hey, Joe, how's it going? You know? Yeah, you're one of us. Hey, what's up? You know, and, and, and to, and then they'll, you know, dive into the, the, the drink and, you know, that they'll get into the sports thing, you know, anything to kind of make us feel like we belong and, and have some peace and comfort, you know, but the world's way of that kind of thing, it's, you know, the, the, just try getting sick one time or getting cancer and you'll see how many friends you have, you know, they just disappear. The, the, the glad, the glad handing at the bar, the, the, the corner of street bar you go to that just, those people just disappear. It all disappears. No, not every time, you know, not all the time, but I mean, it's, it's, even if it didn't, what good is it? You're not there anymore. You're now in a hospital or you're, you know, you're in a hospice or you're, suffering at home and you're asking God have you forgotten me you know this psalm 77 that I just read started off with you know his sores were not healing yeah your ulcers your cancers your whatever you have it's not healing you're getting older so you're naturally going to have these kind of diseases and they're not healing and it's like well that's the basic structure but then you you fall and break your leg you're not you know you Things happen, you lose an arm, you lose a leg, you, you know, then you lose, you lose a spouse, you lose children. It's a constant process of grief. And, but the Lord wants us to be joyous and, and grieving. So we're grieving, Lord, have you forgotten us? Have you forsaken us, Lord? And joyous, oh, no one is like you, Lord. You are the, you know, I'm only really joyous. My true joy is what I'm seriously like silly silliness wise praising the lord in that contest context when i'm being silly and i'm looking at the trees or i'm looking at i'm thinking about palm trees and coconuts right now but you know i'm going wow you know and i look at a mountain and i, I say oh gee lord you know who look how pleasing the ocean is deep blue and how pleasing fish look even though I'm, I'm going to eat one, you know, I give praise for that fish to give his life. <clears throat> yeah, I know you could, you could not be a, I know there's a little debate about whether you should eat, but have you ever seen a um, lion uh, or a group of lions uh, or cheetahs take down a zebra and when they're gorging on that flesh, doesn't it just seem as natural as can be that they would uh, hunt down that zebra and kill it and share it and how and the excitement and joy they have at being able to have a meal? Yes, at the expense of the zebra who lost his life or who gave his life or was there to be, you know, why would God make creatures that would be predators? Or when an when a, um, owl gets a mouse, you know, it's like then you realize why the mice are there. And then, and then the, the grim reaper gets us, you know, and we take each other's lives. I mean, we murder for no reason. And, and it's not like the animals, they're going to kill an animal to eat it, but we murder for no reason. There are sport hunters that go out and sport, and I'm getting completely off the point, but there is a point, but I mean, perhaps we need, we need to have a little chat because it's been... I've kept my powder dry during this whole thing because, you know, the thing that's, that's pushing on me, I've kept my powder dry the whole time because, you know, everybody is saying, okay, you know, I mean, I wasn't alone when I, 2008, I talked about free speech being gone. It pretty much is. Those of you on Facebook, you know, if you say anything, you get booted out. You know, people are saying a lot of things, but you know, they're, they're, 
kind of beta testing that, but they're beta testing the First and Second Amendments being gone. And we, we talked about all this. I said in 2008, and you'll recall, and the archives are there to prove it. You just go look in the archives, you'll see it. Because when a message comes, it isn't just one day. It repeats over and over and over. So 2008, you know, around the time of the election, look at the archives just out in November, December of 2008. Um, you'll see, I said that, you know, this would be the end of free speech, the end of rights, or basically calling him a king already. I recognize what was going on. That the um, it would. I also said, you know, this will go to blood. You know, there, there's a, a great divide. You know, obviously, and the other thing we talked about from 2008, nine, and ten, eleven, we talked about um, twelve and now thirteen. Wow, it's been a little. Has it been that long? I feel like I just woke up. I feel like I'm I'm brand new. I feel like I haven't lived one day in my life. Huh. In my real self, of course, I'm I like that every day. There is no day and there is no night. It just is, and I'm just on. But I'm not there. I came here. I came here to Earth. So that will have to wait. Uh, the... Uh, we talked about that, you know, and now now we're seeing, you know, the fulfillment of those predictions. And I'm sorry I made them, but, you know, you know, it's like lightning in a bottle. You know, when you first see the thing that first happens, boom, your first impression, you know what I mean? And that you, a lot of times turns out to be the right thing. Um, we, for years, have been uh, reading from the book of Daniel and Revelation and, you know, some of the other prophets... Um, I suppose it's time for Zechariah now and, uh, like Isaiah 24 and, you know, there's time for, you know, Ezekiel. Yeah. They're running each other through with swords. Yeah. There, <laughs> some of the more gritty prophecies are coming to mind, especially, uh, in, uh, Jeremiah, you know, uh, 50, 51. Gosh, you know, we'll have to delve into those. You know, I suggest you do a little reading of the prophets, particularly, you know, Zechariah, you know, the, the, the conclusion, you know, the last couple of chapters of Zechariah. But the, the, the fact of the matter, I know people have tortured themselves to make the Bible be considered to be real and technological and taking into account everything. But, you know, it's, you have to understand something. It's a, it's a compression issue. There's, um, you know, things that happened before and then they happen again, and then the prophecy apl applies to the end as it was before it is again, and then it is, and then it is no more. It won't repeat again. You see what I mean? There have been people since uh, Jeremiah predicted the captivity of the of the uh, Israelites into um, of of the Jews into Babylon, and made the prophecy that the, the houses will be lived in by foreigners. You might recall, and. Uh, you know, that applies to the United States. And I, I remember that I had said that um, that I had a vision where all the people here were gone and they were replaced by the Chinese. The Americans were not actually here. Um, that And then others, that America was completely destroyed. And the warnings went out from 2002, 2003, 2004 that if you, America, do not repent, I, the Lord, will strike you down. I mean, I will strike you down and I will finish you. You who have been much blessed, owed the most, yet you let your churches, your halls of, of political uh, power, your educational systems and your pop culture and your, you turned it all to Satan, everything, the whole nation, to where if you call anyone a Satanist, it would be laughed at because everyone is, nod, wink. And now here's the consequence. What we all predicted, me, 
people before me, like Demetri Dudeman and other people like that, all come due. Every one of us was right. Even though back in the day, you know, we doubted ourselves. And I think anyone that has a prophetic calling at all in any way, shape, or form should be trembling when they're going to give something out. But, you know, like I have with Barack, I've been very careful with this, you see, because, but I've been tracking it and I've been showing you all the aspects of how, you know, if this, I mean, because I, look, be honest, I wouldn't, you know, I'm like a, a clock too. So me as a clock would, mine is tuned to the end. So my appearance on earth would mean, okay, that's going to go to the conclusion, you know? So that's, that's good news. That if that's the case, then Obama must be the antichrist because I'm here. So he must, if I'm here, he's here. If I'm not here, he's not here. I can, I can go, Mike, I can do that. That's holographic reasoning, but I can, I can look at it that way, knowing who I am in the Lord and what my, uh, you know, my in, uh, unutterable name is. I mean, I have a feeling about it, but I, but you know, it's hard to put into words. It's a, you can't put it into words. The true names of you and me and everybody, you can't put into words. You have an identity with the Lord that's a, that's a secret identity that only you and him know. And, um, Consider it to be like a vibe or a feeling. You know, you have a feeling about it, right? And that feeling, it, you know, gives you an idea about who you are, but also what you, your appearance on earth means prophetically. Every single person has a meaning. It's like, it is, is like a vowel or a consonant. Okay, and it has, it has a utility. Um, so this is the time of the end. And I mean, I keep repeating it over and over again, but there's just this little cautionary thing to let God be God. Is that okay? You know, I know it's happening, and I, I suppose we should get ready for preparation, but the only preparation you need to do is basically to prepare to die because that's what's going to happen to most people here on this continent. And um, so it's you you got to be ready to meet your maker. That's, that's all the preparation you really need to do. I mean, I'm not going to tell you to become a doomsday prepper. I mean, these people are foolish. There's, well, let, well, God bless them. Okay. God bless them. You know, let the, let your fancy flow. You know, we're humans. We're creative. You know, um, people want to survive. And the question I would ask any of these preppers would be why you want to live in the, you know, that's, I love the book of Eli movie and I, you know, it looks like that's coming true. Prof- Hollywood rejected. They hate all that kind of thinking, even though they're bringing about the apocalypse and the aftermath of war. The aftermath of a nuclear um, hollow. And notice how Obama gets rid of the nukes to embolden the enemies to be cruising off our shores. The plan being so that he can sacrifice us to his God and make it look like he's not like he's taking care of everybody. You know, um, let me, let me just go. Oh, it's important to talk. Am I talking politics now? No, I'm talking prophetic fulfillment. I'm talking about the book of revelation right before our eyes, Barack Hussein Obama. I'm talking about the idea that this is the man of perdition. We've been talking about this over and over again, that he is a king. I proved and others did too, that no one could oppose this man. I told you. I showed you how Boehner and humiliating himself publicly was part of an initiation right to get in with recognizing that Obama may be the devil incarnate. So he's, and being that he's obviously not free, he's wanting to cut the best deal he can. That's probably the same thing he did when he was a kid. But everybody knows the devil. Everyone's bowed down in this country. Everyone. Everyone. So there's really nothing left to save. I don't want to scare you, but um, there is a remnant here of the Lord's own who are here to be witnesses. The entire end of time, my friends, 
All of this has to do with God's vengeance. None of this, this is the time for war and vengeance. I'm sorry, but this is not, you know, the time to go on another thousand years or do make plans to, you know, we're in a time of war. The war has been brought, <clears throat> you could say, if you want a human, you know, I just say from Satan and it's part of prophecy and it's going to happen because it's written, you know. But if we want to go into man-made causes, I told you, no one's life is worth a billion dollars or even a million dollars or maybe even $500 these days. So when you have a, a nation that is, the reason they want to rise the debt is to justify the nuking of the cities and the, and the, the scrubbing of the nation uh, to get it ready for a new people um, because they can't pay the debt. And then the debt gets, with, with war, the get, debt gets erased. But it can't get erased unless you have a blood sacrifice. That's, you know, I mean, that's like one-on-one -on -one basic. So when you have a people that has $16 trillion in debt and you have Europe kind of in the same shape, they, they also have to be wiped off the face of the earth. And the people doing that would be, you know, riding the um, white horse to go forth to conquer and the pale horse of the horses of the apocalypse. These are, these are the seals that are broken open. So these are running and, you know, it doesn't, the human justification is money. It's always money. They bow down to Satan because they want money. They bow down to Satan, which usually takes the form of sexual type of thing. And, you know, you have to become like a little bit of a prostitute. No, you have to become just a secret prostitute in the ritualized satanic world. And then that's how you have a career path. I mean, that's basically it. I mean, we all know that. that that's basically the deep, dark, dirty secret of America and of any other successful nation. So, you know, they all believe. Listen, the people behind Obama worship him and have pledged their lives to serve him because he is the beast. And that's what they believe. I, you know, what, what I believe is, uh, let's say that, that, that I leave room for God to be God. Other people have said it. You have Jonathan Clack. I talked to Johnny last night and, uh, we talked, had, had some, you know, he, he really truly believes Barack Hussein Obama is the Antichrist, the man of perdition, and he is, uh, he's gone with that. And then I've, you know, we've all kind of wondered after the beast. And, and you know, they marvel at him. That, that, that no one has ever marveled at anyone like they marvel at him. I told you that when he came back from Hawaii, this is more where I come in. I go play by play. Play by play. He goes to Hawaii, something that doesn't quite go right. Comes back, has lost his sheen. Has lost the, the thing that, that he had before. I can see that in people. And then he goes back to redo the ritual. Comes back all confident and ready for a fight. Then shows up on his weekly address and seems to have gotten, you know, kind of back at least to just normal, you know, normal. I'm not seeing, um, you know, him launching planes out of the sky or whatever, but there's myths all around about him, uh, about him being like some superhuman, some super creature, some supernatural. So they're expecting him to be able to do signs and wonders, his people. See, the way that I want to look at this is we've all looked at it from the perspective of, I, l let me say this, I'm I'm prophesying and I will prove it to you. No, what I'm saying is, let's look at his people. There are churches and fellowships that have sprung up, dedicating their lives, all for you, Damien, remember? All for you, Damien. Total slavery, allegiance. Slave, I am a bondservant of Barack Obama, that level, across the country. They are your enemies. They want to see you dead. If you oppose him, then you need to be killed. And that's what they think. That's exactly what they think. And you see that on Twitter. It's horrifying for you to understand this, but they're worshiping. The country went to the devil a long time ago. They worship Satan. And secretly, in secret, you know, the baker, the lawyer, the dentist, they've been waiting for their God to appear on earth. And here he is. 
and they pledged to serve him unto death, even under their own death. Just like you would do with Jesus, they're doing with Barack Obama, the same thing. Whether it be the early promoters like Oprah Winfrey believes he's the one and others, people in the, in the powerful people in the entertainment business, and the way that the Congress and Senate acts, they all fall on their swords for him because they are Luciferians. That's why. Whenever they bow down to him, it means they are one of those. The ones that won't, the guys like Rand Paul and others, who I should be supported, but you know they're like a lone voice in the wilderness, they're uh, targeted for extinction because, because this is what's going on. And you say, well, Obama, this is the guy that was in the gay bathhouses in Chicago. You know, and along with Rahm Emanuel, well, the gay thing is like in Hollywood, it's the, that's the norm. They're all gay, and then they have their wives and kids. I mean, that's the way it was in Rome. That's, that's, Hollywood is like, if you don't get with that, you don't work. You know, the only way you're getting in there is if someone finds you pleasing enough to let you serve, service them, and then you have to give yourself away to whoever wants you in the hopes that you can climb up the ladder and that becomes your career path and that's completely satanic but um does that make you a satanist well you you can't advance unless you actually become indwelt so they're all possessed with a certain spirit and that spirit you allow that spirit to take you over because that's how all the, these rituals can be done in the office in the restaurant with a nod and a wink they don't have to be you know what I mean? It's just, that's how it, how it is. So it disappears from society and it's in plain view. That's Satanism 101. So they're all Satanists. Okay, fine. They're God, they're waiting for their God. They're waiting to be connected. They talk about it in their music. Um, I was remembering the, the, the uh, metal guy, Devin Townsend from Canada. You know, real... Big wall of sound mixer, really a very, uh, you know, had some songs. But he had one called Victory. I don't know if any of you are Devin Townsend fans, but you might remember. Victory um, was about the whole world being connected. You know, with the language that was in it was Luciferian. Okay. So, as so many metal guys, I mean, I suppose he would be listed in heavy metal. I think it's, you know, so the lyrics went on to talk about, you know, everyone being connected and that's victory, but it's also the defeat of what was before. In other words, two sides. This would be a world where everyone's on the same page, connected. When you, when you say connected that way, I know exactly what that means. It's like the light bearer makes that possible. So they're Luciferians. They want a world connected. That's the new world order, a world connected. What, what, Townsend was describing as the New World Order, exactly. So that's what he wants. That's okay, that's fine. You know, that's that is a career path to success. Just keep keep being an evangelist for that. That's the road to destruction, though. And that, that's where I so fundamentally disagree with a person like that. I'm not disparaging him personally, but I've you know, I've great respect for him as an artist. But, you know, what he's singing about isn't something that you're ever gonna see. The wheat and the tares grow together. The conflict will be the bullies, the Canaanites, have killed the lambs of God from the beginning. This is about vengeance, the choice of Barack Obama, God choosing him. It's not the devil choosing him. He made the devil to choose him, if you want to just get technical about it. Has to do with God's vengeance and not Barack Obama, and it has nothing to do with the devil. It has to do with setting up the, setting the stage for the vengeance of the Almighty God to eliminate these people from the earth. Period. And to punish them for all the thing, you know, to, to make clear, to bring a wrap up, to all, to bring justice to all the blood spilled from the beginning of time. By Kate, you know, in the in the style of Cain, it's very good that that story is there. That level, satanic bloodletting, from the beginning, wars, which is the same thing. It's just satanic ritual, abortions, and all that. It's all the same thing. Death. 
These people will finally have their comeuppance. Not only will God punish them, but the Lord will set, will end their existence and any thought of them and any plan they might have had or whatever they think. Not only forever and ever, but establish his forever kingdom. Not on the ashes of that. That will be cleansed away as if it never was. And all there will be and all there ever was will be the kingdom of God that you're in. You may not even remember going through this at that time. So, you know, but what, what is the, the, the point, you know, put in human terms, what we would call vengeance is the entire purpose of the end times. It's the vengeance of a holy God against the, the evil ones who hurt his people and spilled their blood and sacrificed them for no good reason from the beginning of time so they could build their putrid little society here. And that society will be wiped clean from any memory of ever having been, period, period. And nobody will stop it, period. And no one will lament it because the lamenters will go down with the ship as well because they're counted, they're counted with the, with, look, the little guys in the system get eaten by the birds just like the big guys in Revelation 19. The little guys, all their servants go down with them. That's why it's so important. The Bible repeats, come out of her and be separate. Come out of her and be separate. Old and New Testament. The only way you could be a Jew, if you like, God's chosen, is to believe in Jesus Christ and what's the other, what, what happens when that happens? Not believe in him. He makes you. He takes you. You're his. So you come out Right? And coming out is a spiritual thing. It's not like you have to leave and go. You know, it's not like coming out as a gay man. No, that's not, not it at all. He, his presence in you separates you from them. Them. There is an us. There is no them. It, now, the wheat and the tares, yes, there's an us and a them. And it's, and the, the, but the, the doors are shut. No, everyone is on the side they're going to be on. They were meant to be on. And living, leaving wiggle room for God, if this is wrong, and if this is not that time, if this is another war and a lot of destruction, then they go again, like if, that, that I predict it would be like the book of Eli. It would, be, it would be a hell that no one would want to be in. The living will envy the dead in that case. But I always leave room for God to be God. I don't like it when people put God in a box, but all the things we've said have come to pass pretty much. I mean, except for your death and my death. So if that happened, what do we care? <laughs> but everything else has come to pass. So you would say, well, if it keeps going like this. Um, if Barack keeps amassing power as supernatural powers, which again, something weird happened in Hawaii. And I, and I really, let me say what I think it is. I think that there was a, uh, a ritual to, you know, they're, they're concerned that he isn't really completely indwelt by Satan or he's got a, the spirit of Satan, but not quite, you know, he's not Lucifer in the flesh. The real coronation of him is to become Satan in the flesh. I mean, that's what they're all waiting for. They will say Lucifer. They also believe that Lucifer is our creator. You must know that, that Lucifer created us, the fallen angels created us, that they're our creator. And they want to worship their creator. And that's, and you know, the prophecy they have is that he will appear in the flesh and he will be the head of, he would be the head of the mightiest nation on earth and the mightiest military. And that's where he is. And he would get there, rise up from, no one saw it coming. And you know, it's a guy, is a gay guy that was basically in the uh, bathhouses of Chicago and but that's not unusual because Rahm Emanuel was there too with him and others, you know, that they, they have these dual lives. But everyone I ever knew in Hollywood, they all had that same dual life. They all did. There wasn't even one person that was not in that system. And that, that's a requirement. So that's why they don't talk about it because that's why they don't have to say, I'm gay. They go, I'm for gay rights. And they don't have to say, I'm gay. 
that's other people have this sort of gay community thing. They don't have to be in the gay community. They have their own life, but I mean, their way is their way. So, I mean, this may be kind of a, uh, the, the sex thing goes to, goes to, goes to the story. So I'm going to say it. So, and all this has been reported on repeatedly. So it's, you know, I'm pretty sure it's, True, but you know, uh, I, in fact, I know it's true, but you know, it's, it's probably a lot more. There's a lot more to it, but that you're not going to get this is the reporting that has been pretty much verified that Obama would prefer to, to do basketball, these pickup games, so he could pick up, you know, guys. And what he preferred was to have a blowjob. You know, he didn't want to reciprocate, he wanted to be served. He wanted to be served which means he's the weakest one in the room as well. But he wanted to be served. So that's the deal. I guess give him a blowjob and they'll allow these people to give him a blowjob. They have a great, then they become somebody famous. You know, they have a career path after that, right? You got to go through him, right? You got to go through one of these guys, give him a blowjob and off you go. And there's your career path. So that's, right, that's our society. That's the way it is here across the board. That's our society. I hope you're proud of it, America. I just can't even imagine. The disgust I feel is beyond even, even I feel so much disgust, it's, it's impossible to say anything. Because, you know, then the next, the next thing is, of course, you know, the, the other evil part of it is they, they, you know, is the sex with children and the, 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 serve, the, the, the pushing the children into um, prostitution and, now, I'm talking about kids that grow up and then become lawyers and doctors. You know, they put them in there at five years old and they have, you know, there's that too. Hollywood's famous for that. You proud of yourself, Hollywood? Well, you ought to be. But, you know, so when this comes, Hollywood, I guess you won't be surprised. Or Washington, D.C. Or Chicago. Or any of your cities. I guess you won't be surprised when they're gone. When I wrote the book Lamb, it was also, I mean, I should just go by that book. It was the end. The, the, there was an angel in Lamb. What he did was he removed all the pyramids from Earth. <laughs> Even back then, I mean, it's amazing that I was writing about this. I didn't really understand the pyramid thing when I was writing about it. But he removed them from Earth and people started committing suicide. It's really amazing. He also removed, they also removed the, uh, the, the paintings from the Louvre and stuff and they started committing suicide over that. So, you, you know, there you go. They're committing suicide right now because they're, they're losing their icons. Oh, my God. So the end times is about restoration of God's people. It's about rejuvenating God's people. It's about lighting a fire under God's people, showing them they're eternal beings. You know, you, you come into some of the first fruits, if you will, are going to be singing that song, are going to be fulfilling, you know, Revelation 7 and 14. Okay, so, you know, understand that. And, and, and the Bible talks of tribulation saints, so many they can't be numbered. You know, are these the people that like didn't are prodigals that didn't know any better or did what they had to do to get along in the world, but they really didn't worship Satan. They really weren't on that side. But custom wise, they did the customs when in Rome doing. Yeah, probably a lot of that. A lot of people that just don't know themselves. I mean, most people I walk around here, they don't know who they are and that who they are changes from day to day. It's not like here you have a record of, of me being, you know, who I am day to day. You know, that doesn't change. You know, that, that, uh, the reason I'm stable in that way is because I have the Holy Spirit, because I have the Holy Spirit and I have the Lord and I have my faith in the Lord. Even if I feel weak spiritually, like I don't have the Holy Spirit, I know my, I have my faith in God and he gives me all my reality is all the news, everything gets sifted through that. So I have that at the end of the day. And in that, I cannot be fearful. I can't be jumping around you know, um, uh, in, in this thing or that, 
But when you see people in the world, they're, they're stable. They have stability that their group gives them. Hence, they're all codependent with each other in their groups. And when they stray from the group, they, their personalities change, you know. They change up, down, sideways, every other way. And, um, you know, you have to put them back in their group. And then they understand. They start getting along and they start, you know, they know how to bow down and they know how to be a slave. Too many people in this country became slaves of Satan. I'm talking about your average people. I'm not talking about the elites here. The elites run it, you know, and then other people, other beings, you know, run that. But basically at the, the, the very base level, I mean, people that are just working these silly little jobs, um, they've all bowed down to Satan. I mean, it's it's un- unbelievable to me being a visitor here. To, to, I, I, you know, take me to any other planet if there are people on it and, you know, will they become, you know, the, the, I understand it from the from the idea that within us is corrupted. So we're going to, the exterior will be corrupted. I understand that. But still, God is going to hold accountable. God is going to hold accountable all the the bloodletting of his lambs. The, the wrath of lamb, of the lamb, is what they're afraid of, that there will be a backlash one day that they dread. They're even writing books about Armageddon bypass. The New Agers want an Armageddon by. They don't want to pay for whatever they've done. They have to pay. The New Agers have to pay. They let the blood. I don't care if they never personally killed anyone. They are responsible for the blood from the beginning of time, period. And they will be tried, and they've already been tried, and judged with vengeance. Who was it, Barbara Marks Hubbard, or one of them wanted to be the rider of the pale horse? (laughs) Yeah, they can't wait to let even more blood. And they're waiting for Obama to sacrifice the the evil people of the United States so they can have their Luciferian kingdom. And they are willing to work for that. And with a race war, civil war, any kind of war they can to make that blood sacrifice a reality. And he's already wanting to do the whole Lincoln thing and Lincoln's birthday. And he's, you know, so Lincoln was the presider of the civil war. And so that's what he, he wants to bring about the civil war so he can play Lincoln. And, you know, there's nothing and nothing anyone can do to stop it. Uh, you know, what I would tell my brothers and sisters is, is this war really about you? Is this a war that, uh, are you really going to go um, fight the government? Are you going to fight the tattletale progressives who are going to be turning you in? And it's whatever their reasons are, they're stupid, they're childish. That's right, they're vindictive. They're horrible. They have no basis in reality. Um, you know, they're, they're not adult. They're emotional. They're stupid. But it's a system, and it's going to work, like checkpoints and all that stuff that's freaking Alex Jones out, we predicted long ago. And, you know, I've had time to be calm about it. There will be people who try to meet the old new boss, same as the old boss, and you will burn in hell. And I guarantee it. I I guarantee it. There is a divide. There is a punishment. There is a hell. There is a heaven. Heaven, you know, is... is, uh, Both of those are multidimensional aspects. And one of those is there's an actual time thing on it. It's hard to explain. That's another topic. I don't want to get confused with that. But they will burn. And they will burn on earth. It's not like they'll burn on hell. They will burn on earth. The war that Barack Obama, the king, King Pharaoh, the Pharaoh Obama, he's really the Pharaoh of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So um, he's just like in the days of old, here he is. He will be defeated strongly. He will fall horribly. There'll be no devil in him then. They keep trying to stoke it up with, you know, I mean, look, the Washington Monument, the reflecting pool, 
is for the purpose of of demonic possession. That's that's the whole reason it's there. I know the people that put the scriptures in the top of the in the capstone of the pyramid, I mean the obelisk. I know they thought they were doing good. I mean, these people are the the biggest dupes on earth, but I mean, you know, it's like going into a temple of Satan, a temple of bloodletting, and 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 putting some scriptures and hiding them in the in the seats or hiding them in the some of the uh, of of the uh, devilish icons hiding a little piece of what what the heck, what do you think you're doing justifying your evil because you put scripture there in the in the evil obelisk oh. washington dc is the center of power for the earth still is the 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 mystery babylon king would be would be that would be the head of that nation and would then sacrifice the nation for personal gain all of this is in you know 7 8 9 10 11 of Daniel. It's just amazing when you think about it. Uh, we've seen the world now marveling after the beast. We saw Jamie Foxx proclaim our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. He believes that, that they, they believe on a very deep level he's the one that they've been waiting for They've been waiting for their god, Lucifer. I mean, Jamie Foxx wouldn't even have a career without Lucifer. So they're grateful. None of them would. That's, you know, without being that, without being a Luciferian, you ain't going to get into Hollywood. No way, no how. That whole idea of a Christian alternative, they're just Satanist light. They're, they're, the, the, the idea of Christian music, that's a joke. They, they're Satanist. They, they all have to bow down the same way to be stars. You don't get to be a star in the lights unless you sell your soul to the devil, literally, and then take an indwelling uh, spirit that makes you family with them. And if they don't see that, you don't work. Period. Never has been different. And they will never accept anyone from the outside. And they never have, and they never will. Just like the, the, the Who song, Tommy. We're not going to take you, never did, and never will. Because he wasn't one of them. Never did and never will. They never have and they never will. So that goes for, you know, the arts, government, whatever. doesn't matter. It's they never have and they never will. This whole America became one big temple of Lucifer. How these Masons thought they were Christians is beyond me. I cannot even imagine how duped Masonry has duped people. I can't even imagine, I guess because Lucifer is deception, so the first people to be deceived are Masons. Most of them never get to the higher degrees. They never figure it out. But I mean, come on, the vibe, it just reeks, doesn't it? When you start going to these little uh, lodges with all these symbols and, you know, these icons, you know, don't you get the message? Don't you look at the evil obelisk? It doesn't give off any kind of sign to you that there's something wrong there. We see these pyramids and they're, they're all, these are all pyramids. The obelisk is just a pyramid. We see these pyramids in um, India, China, uh, Europe, um, you know, especially then through the, throughout the Middle East. Uh, it, it's, it's basically the sign of the fallen angels. You know, those are the gods that they, they want to come back and to rule. And the chief among them, the serpent god, which would be Quetzalcoatl or Lucifer, whatever. The, the, um, I may be, and those of you who have folklore and mythology and you, you, my combining those two is wrong, please don't take me to task over that. Um, you know, that's fine. You know, we'll just say, well, let me stipulate this because I know that would bother you. Okay, Quetzalcoatl um, slash, uh, you know, period. And then Lucifer is the one for the West and and Quetzalcoatl would be the one for the, for the, for the Maya or for the, but, you know, uh, the, the whole thing sur surrounding the reptilian, and let's take it symbolically. The reptilian race headed by Lucifer, their god, uh, the re reptilian um, interdimensional beings uh, are the gods to be worshipped. They do blood sacrifice to bring the gods close. 
one day the gods will return and there'll be a new Atlantis with high technology and, and goodwill toward men and everything will be fine again and this war will be over. They're at war with you. They've been at war. And I, when I discovered that, I was horrified to find family members and other people actually attacking me, wanting to kill me like they were in a war. So I had to wake up fast. I had to find out well, what was going on. Well, this war has been raging. We, you know, or as my friend said, and I think this is very astute on his part, what you're seeing, and he said this a while back when we saw, you know, the aftermath of the election in, 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 the, the, in the divided country and the, the way people are being pitted against each other in a civil, we're in a civil war right now. But he said, this is World War Three. You know, because what has to happen for their new world order, this United States must be sacrificed because the debt can't be paid and that's the only way to set the clock back. Same with Europe, to a lesser extent, it has to be reset only through global war. That's why Obama has gotten rid of the nukes so that uh, the U.S. cannot retaliate because that's not what he wants to do. He wants to be the, Luke's, the nukes to land here, just, you know, and then clean it up. He doesn't want to retaliate. He won't retaliate. He want, he'd like to get rid of all the nukes here just to invite people to uh, bomb it. That's all part of, you know, the strategy. He's not an American. And his, 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 he is a Luciferian. And all the ones who are here who are Luciferians, they're not Americans. They serve their God, and now they must bow down. I saw Boehner bow down to Barack Obama. I saw Boehner sell his soul to the devil publicly. I saw it. He belongs to Lucifer. Guarantee it. He could go to church. I don't care what he says about himself. He belongs to Lucifer. That's John Boehner. He belongs to Lucifer. It was seen publicly. If I were him, I would quit politics and get on my face before the living God and apologize. But, you know, maybe that's not his God. That may not be his father. See, when they worship Lucifer, that is their father. You must understand that. That is their father. They're not like you. There's an us and a them. It's, a gen- it's broken down along genetic lines. You either have that God gene or you don't. If you do, then you recognize the call of your father. You were, you were, you know, you were, your DNA says that you were his and, and he will take you and you will go with him. And it will, he won't lose even one. So there is no danger of that. Why do the churches keep harping on, oh, I'm the one that put the, the, I'm the one that put the nails in Jesus. I'm such a lowly, awful sinner, and we're all the same, and that's why we're out here with this mission to event. What are you talking about? Those who are gods go with God, and it's already written. What are you talking about? That's just an excuse. Yes, the church is run by Lucifer. That's right. Those who belong to God go with God, period. We need to have some axiomatic statements here with a period at the end. Because there are all these people, all oh, those uh, people losing and God's weeping. He's not weeping. He's, you know, he, yes, he experiences emotion, but the point is, is he already knows where they're going to go. He knew that before you were born. What are you talking about? He obviously planned it. He wanted the two, the two species to collide. You know, I'll put enmity between you and, the, you know, between the, what, the woman and the man? Uh, well, it looks like it's between the, uh, uh, the, the serpent and uh, the Godhead. I mean, it just seems to be this eternal contest played out in, you know, uh, in, uh, in physical terms. But Satan is not my creator you know lucifer is not my progenitor although i understand my dna may be corrupted because of him but if i have the god gene obviously my creator is the father but if i don't then my creator would be lucifer you know so uh, it'd be a co-creator in other words he'd have material that god made and twist it into his own little creation but i mean that's all anyone can do. No one's the creator like God. So obviously God knew that was going to happen and it was going to play out. But he, he, he will, 
it seems to me what God is up to. I mean, I'm just purely a stupid human at this point. But let's just say it this way. He's going to glorify himself and he has to put maximum good against maximum evil, have good win out in the end and have him reign as king and savior for all in pure love and pure light. And that is basically what he's going to prove. And that's what that he'll he'll put. It's almost like someone playing chess against themselves. You know what I mean? And, and who sets it up so they have so they're going to win in the end. They're going to get the checkmate in the end. But it's going to be a, a a good dramatic game, and it's going to look like you're going to lose. But you set up just enough of an edge to kind of you know win. I mean, in in a, in, a, in a, I guess in a lesser degree, you know, God sets it up so it looks to everybody like he's going to lose. If if you knew God was going to win, would you bow down to Lucifer? Hell no. So they all believe that God is going to lose or has lost, and they believe that Barack Hussein Obama is God on Earth. And they believe that he came from God. And when they say God, when they say Barack Obama came from God, they don't mean the creator God. They mean Lucifer, the creator of mankind, is what they think. But they're not, they're going to call him Yahweh. They will call him Yahweh. They'll call him God. Barack Obama did not come from God. He is the opposite of God. Completely, 100% the opposite. In every in every detail, he is every everything that they say about Satanist. He is perfectly. He the shoe fits perfectly. Uh, vengeance on enemies, no forgiveness ever. Uh, love the people that are your friends. In other words, you know you bow down to him, and you can cut a pretty good deal. Basically, he likes to have a blow job with no reciprocation on his part. So uh, that's uh, that's his thing. So if you get to be in the room with him or on an airplane or something like uh, Chris Christie did, uh, you know what to do. <laughs> I know that's tawdry, but that's the way I'm saying it for a reason. You know, but all everything you see is about this. Everything you see all over the world is about this same pecking order and up and down. And all has to, yes, and the whole sodomy thing is going on and, and sex and whatnot and prostitute. It's all part of it. It's why we need a savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody that embraces the world as Obama does and is there to be served. I just find it interesting that in sex, he was there to be served. It's like the same exact thing. It's, it was a pattern here. Uh, my sources were uh, a couple of sources, Wayne Madsen, 2010, and a couple others, you know. It's been verified. It's true. It's 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 been doubly, triply, quadruply verified that that's what's going. There was a guy that got killed a couple of them, and that was just to, to be an example to the rest of them that had sex with Obama to keep their mouth shut, or they're going to wind up dead too. That's a Chicago style mob hit type of thing, and that's that's what they do. They don't want. They want. I guess still the public doesn't know this about him. That's he was already called the first gay president. The people don't understand. That he's gay, he's not a heterosexual. I mean, you can have a wife. They all do. All the the all these guys have wives and children and families in, in Hollywood. Uh, they all do. So I don't understand why there's this, everyone playing so, you know, precious coy that I, I don't understand being prude here. You know, it is what it is. If you don't have that set up like that, you ain't working. You ain't there. You don't exist. Meaning the nation of America is Luciferian, period. And I believe that they, you know, intended to, you know, just like the churches, maybe the intention in the beginning was good, but it it became a fit extension for Satan. People still believe that Obama is just a, a, a good husband to, you know, his wife, that that there's no connection there. You can, you know, you have sperm, you can, you know, you can, uh, you can create children. That doesn't mean that you're not, doesn't mean he's not gay, but it, you know, it does fulfill the prophecy that he's no friend of women in that way. He's not, he's not. He's a guy that, you know, you, you, you play basketball with, you don't know him, you go home, he gets you high on 
bud and you're sitting around and he tries to convince you to give him a blowjob. I mean, that's basically what, what the deal is when, when you were kids, you know, there's always somebody like that, right? <laughs> oh God, it's so silly. We take ourselves too seriously, but anyway, so I guess that path led to the presidency and the fact that he already knew and was already programmed to become a king. And early on, he used to brag about it. He used to tell people that he would be a, a king. He thought he'd be king of Indonesia at one point. But now, you know, this is the people that have openly worshipped him in public during his appearances. They've actually worshipped him as God on earth. This is already taking place all over the world. They believe he is the one. This is the one Paul McCartney has been pining for his whole life. This is what his whole pathetic little life led to. I say pathetic because, you know, great musician. You know, I won't take that away from him. Amazing music with the Beatles. Uh, some very superb yet satanically inspired, fallen angel inspired music. But I mean, tops, give him that. But pathetic, meaning he just has no clue. He has no clue whatsoever. They think, and a guy like him who's an elite would think, that we're just going to clean up the mess of these stupid conservatives, right? And, 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 and we're, you know, and then we're going to have our world like Devin Townsend wrote about, you know, in Triumph or whatever it was. What, I forget the name of the song. One of you metal guys will know. Okay? So, you know, the idea of what they want to build even is pathetic, the idea of Lucifer's kingdom coming to earth of all the high technology and advancements and, and no disease and, and a thousand points of light is pathetic. It's no new Jerusalem. It's no other dimension. It's working within this one. And I know they already have time travel and you know, blah, 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 blah. And the aliens are us. And, you know, I understand all that. But still, all those tin cans flying around all those wormholes and portals and time travel and all that, it's still prison. That's what all the angst is about. They want that prison door to be open. It's still prison. There's a guy talking about time travel from New Mexico that one of the portals, believe it or not, was right here where I live in the Cerritos Hills area. Yeah, right here in, in New Mexico. You know, out in the country here, there's, and I've been to these portals and I know, I know. And this guy says he goes, was going in and out from these various places. And he, he claimed to have seen, you know, Lincoln shot and, and I didn't really believe everything he said. He probably a gov disinfo agent for UFO nuts or whatever. But, um, what he's talking about is, yeah, it's completely possible. And, my proof is if you look at the world every day, it's different. You wake up and it's different. You wake up and suddenly the Antichrist is there, you know, and all this supernatural stuff is going on. It all happened so quickly. How'd that all happen? Right? Go check scripture. Get on your knees to the Lord. Get on your faces to the Lord. Bow down to the Lord because he's going to rescue from this. But how, why this drama? Can I have a different drama, please? And, um, Anyway, this is what we're contending with and the fulfillment of everything that we predicted. I guess I feel vindicated after, from 2002 on. Um, vindicated kind of in the way that, you know, because people accused me of lying about the economy crashing and things like that when we were predicting it. And, you know, the global meltdown, global war and all that stuff. And now it's kind of right at our doorstep. And, and you know, I mean, if, it, if everything I talked about fulfilled you wouldn't you wouldn't be here to criticize me for sure and I wouldn't be here to to deal with that so um let's just say that the day is the way the day is when you first get up in the morning you see the way the day is it usually it ends up being that way and you know so if this much has happened to this point the rest will happen does that mean the end the end the end or will there be another thing like this or are there other worlds like this what about the aliens what about all that I'm absolutely convinced these that we are going to have the return of the alien that that has to if this is the end 
you will see that return. Satan gets thrown down to the earth. You know, but uh, along with that, you're going to have chaos, war, and massive bloodshed, which will be, um, you know, what Obama will consider his personal sacrifice. You know, but but then again, is he really Obama? What well, what is Obama? You know what I mean? Is he just like a, he's just a fit extension for the, for for his his God? Who who you know he will the, they're worshiping him because they feel that he will be indwelt by Satan literally, and they're worshiping him because they feel he is the one. And you know, and they believe he came from God because God's the creator and he created everyone. And if you look at what he does exactly and what he says, he is a 100% perfect, very crafty, very um, slithery, Luciferian, satan- Satanist, uh, whatever. Uh, he's perf- exactly perfect. Uh, it's, it's 100% that, 100, no percentage anything else. There isn't a little of this and a little of that like, like most people. It's 100% one way. He's above Congress, Above uh, the UN, above uh, the Senate, above the military, all of them all over the world, he is, you know, slowly becoming the coronated king of the world, which would be Lucifer. But Lucifer would have to indwell him. Something went wrong in Hawaii, and now it seems back on track. Is he? I haven't looked at him lately, so. But if he is possessed by Lucifer, there would be great celebrations and and I believe the return, that would also indicate the return of the gods. So there would be this preparation to people to accept this new reality, which would be a global crisis, that there would be this, um, that our real creators are coming back, you know, in their ships and whatnot to witness the coronation of their king, much like the coronation of you know, the Jesus and the, and the traveling to the manger and the star and whatnot. If, you know, the same, it's, it's, it's a mirror image, antichrist, Christ, anti, matter, antimatter. It's a mirror image. Just as Christ would be perfect, would not lie, would not sin, would not engage, was wise and, you know, beyond himself. He did everything perfectly. Obama, if that's the one, would do everything perfectly on the satanic side. So there'd be, Nothing but lies, and they'd be perfect. Everything would be a deception, but it would all be perfect. When I was talking, I talked to Johnny Clack. I'm going to get him on the show, and we're going to talk about this some more. But um, I've talked to other people, too, about it. I'm you know, talking about this because I'm interested in the structure of it. Whether, you know, if it goes to civil war, I, I've kind of detached from a personal, you know, I don't have any personal anger right now about about uh, these things because these things were already predicted to come to pass and um, they will come to pass. So I'm at peace with that, that this is, you know, everything is of God. There's nothing random going on here. There's nothing I need to fight personally. You know, th- this is this has all been meant to be and written from the beginning of time. And, you know, we were meant to go through a time like this and, and, and agree to be going through it or we wouldn't be here. And it really doesn't matter anyway, but by, by now we should have always all given our lives to, to, to God. You know, you do the best you can with the blessings we have. You, you know, you be a good steward, run your business as well. Do, your, do whatever you're going to do. You know, some of you fly around in airplanes, some of you... Uh, make things, you know, some of you are, are day workers, it, it, you know, it doesn't really matter, you know, yes, yes, continue. I, the thing I don't want, the thing God doesn't want me to say is, okay, it, this is all happening, I think I'll wait. We're not waiting for anything, you know, you do what you're going to do, you know, you, well, don't I need to stop everything and prepare? no. Don't I need to move to another country? No, there's nowhere to move. Don't I need to, you know, so there's this tendency now, people, to quit everything and, and wait. 
And it's like, no, you just got to ride it out. It's going to affect everything, but you got to ride it out. You know, may, and let's, let's say this, let's always stipulate that God is God. I can't put him in a box. If he wanted to, he could just somehow, and it would line up with the word, make it go a long time more. So I'm going to say that where other people won't. I'm going to, I'm going to say that because that is accurate. You know, that there are things about time and space in this dimension that, 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 are, that are fluid in a fixed situation. And so, you know, I know people want definitiveness and they want to say, this is it, period. And, it, and, that's, and even if you die and I die and everything in the, you know, Washington and L.A. and Chicago, they're all blown off the face of the earth with nukes and the whole thing is looking like that. And then the bad guys are here on the rounding people up and putting them in, in concentration camps or whatnot. You know, that kind of scenario. Even with that, that didn't mean that still wouldn't be everything about the end, would it? You see, people would say, well, that's the end in the time of World War II, in the time of World War I, in different times. That was the end. That had to be it. I agree with the people that say, well, it feels like the end. It's like, yes, feels like the end. It really feels like the end. We really have the vibe of the end. Never seen anything like this. So you got to keep watching Obama. Watching Obama is like reading the Bible. It's a spiritual exercise. You know, it's knowing and using discernment of knowing the landscape of the time and space you're in. So the Antichrist, let's just, let's just review what we know. The Antichrist pattern is in place. The things the Antichrist would bring that, you know, Riding the white horse. The seal has been released. The things we can expect, wars everywhere. And, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 everyone lining up to kiss his butt and get, uh, or, or the other thing, uh, and to get um, uh, those uh, perks or whatever. Um, they're lining up and you, you're seeing them. Boehner was first among them. He took his punishment, his public humiliation, and he was initiated. That's that's what you pay me for. That's 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 the kind of thing I that I can that that's what I offer in in my observation that is probably a bit unique to other people. So I'm kind of mixed feelings. I would love to go about my business. You know, and but but why do we produce sound here? Why do we produce words and music? Why do we do that? In other words, without this, would there be any meaning? No, I don't think so. What would the purpose be of music and sound and words? There wouldn't be any purpose to it if if this was not real. There wouldn't be any anything to think about if this, this the way we've described the world isn't exactly as it is. There would be no reason to, uh, 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 you know, there would be nothing to work through within ourselves regarding fear and doubt and pain and suffering. You know, all those things have to be worked out. I have thorns in my side. I talked to a, uh, you know, talk to some people and, you know, I, we, sometimes we discuss our thorns and I, I want to tell you this about your thorn. You who resent your thorns, don't do that because you see, the Lord showed me, he revealed something to me very important. I prayed for years for certain thorns to be removed and they're still there. So what was the answer, Lord? And he gave me the answer. Would you like to hear the Rima? This is, this is not just Rima. This will fix it for you. I think I mentioned it before, but maybe you didn't pick up on it well enough. The, the thorns come with the state of humanity. There's nobody alive who doesn't have a thorn. Without the thorn, you wouldn't be here in the first place. That's how he showed it to me. And so when I understood that, I shut up. I quit praying about, you know, I quit repeat, repeating the prayer. As, as 
hard as that may be to accept, that's the uh, multidimensional truth. Without the thorn, you don't exist. Because remember, this is all coming from outside of time. What happened? You were born, then you got the thorn. There is no then. You know, without the thorn, you don't exist. If I, in other words, I, God, I, your father, if I pull the thorn out, you cease to exist. Why, I don't know. That's something you won't hear anywhere else on earth. Probably, but I'm sure it's, I'm not the only one that's thought about it, but I haven't seen it anywhere. So I offer it here as a comfort to you. If God removed that particular thorn you've been praying about for 20 years, you wouldn't be there. So it's really a, bl a blessing in a way because the thorn gives you life. The thorn makes you alive. Take it away, you cease to have, not only do you cease to exist, you cease to have ever been born. You, it would be as if you never were. And you want him to pull the thorn out? You wouldn't be. And he won't do it. Because it would be, he's not going to kill his own children. No, with directly. So when they promise to pull the thorn out with your cancer, and you go through the, all the process with the medical and you get the chemo and do the whole thing, and then you die. The other guy, he's dealing with the cancer and he decides to give it all to the Lord. And he goes and he lives another 20 years. Um, you know, there you go. He had to, but was the cancer ever completely gone? Not really. It's always kind of there. It's a thorn. The guy who had the thorn removed, he died. He went and got all those treatments to remove the thorn and they got all the cancer and he died. You know, he would have to live with the cancer. No one likes that because, you know, they have to put up with pain and, you know, and then, and then worry. And some, they do all this radiation and, and operations and they just send you home to die. You know, in other words, it's, you try to get the thorn removed by man, but the thorn's not going to be removed. I mean, if the, when the thorn was removed, i.e. we burnt all the cancer out, we cut it out and we burn it out. More often than not, these people just die at that point. Sometimes they go into a remission, but there's always, there's always that threat, you know, with anybody that there'll be a disease lurking around. There's always going to be a thorn. One thorn is old age. You feel like inside a child. You, you have the mind of a child. You're creative like a child. And yet you look at your body and it's this old body. You're going, what in the world? It's another thorn, isn't it? All these thorns um, are necessary for life. Just as the, um, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the, the actual life joy factor. There's a joy uh, and sorrow. It takes both to make a, an entire life. One cannot just be in joy all the time because there would be no, no, nothing to measure it against. So hence, there would be no joy. Joy exists along with pain and suffering. Suffering, you know, thorns and all that kind of, in a, in a sense, it, this whole creation, this idea of planets and worlds and all that, light and dark and these things kind of all go together to produce what we have here. It's not acceptable, and there are other dimensions where things uh, have a spiritual dimension and a physical dimension wedded, and that's what the Luciferians have been working for, for that wedded dimension, that wedded dimension of, of the spirit and, the, and, the, and space, the space you have here, but with the spirit, in other words, to be like eternal gods on high, above the Lord. Well, you can see they already believe they're above Yahweh because they put them, they, Barack Obama has already committed the abomination of desolation with, um, was, was it Psalm 46? What, what was that? I don't know if it was that one. But um, he's already, he's already committed, I mean, he, 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 
he's committed it over and over again. And um, so the ceremonies of be still and know that I am God and all that. Uh, sure, uh, you know that that's um, that's one. People say, well, that's the definitive moment. No, that's not the definitive moment. The the, the definitive moment is. Um, you just got to keep your eyes on Israel and how that all all works out. You know, the definitive moment, it, it seems to me that that he has to, he's blasphemed the church, he's blasphemed the word of God, he's done that. He's blasphemed the most, he's fulfilled all the Daniel stuff. He's, he really has. Uh, the abomination of desolation is basically, uh, was already in existence before he even got there. But yeah, he fulfills that, of course. You know, um, the president of the United States swearing in on a Bible um, has been the abomination of desolation because all the presidents are Luciferians. I mean, so therefore, swearing in on a Bible would be the abomination of desolation every time. Every time. You know, it's like if they don't believe in the, or they hate the book, in the case of Obama, then they shouldn't put his hand on it. But see, it's all to deceive you. People don't know he, who he is. All for you, Damien, as she jumps out the window hanging herself because Damien would like that, having a nice sacrifice. All for you. You know, you got under, what are you dealing with? A few years ago, before the election, the re-election of Obama, he seemed to be faltering and he seemed kind of weak. He seemed kind of um, not really imperious as he is now. So there's been some change and it's been a total change of his personality over time. So we see the influence. But what do I say when I'm, I say I'm looking for the indwelling of Satan to occur? You know, and people are already saying he is already indwelt. You're just missing it. See, I'm like, there is another component to it. Now I'll get a lot of you thinking. And I, th I don't know if I'm right or not. I, I never know if I'm right. <laughs> we know when history goes by, you know. That if um, there's just something else, and I and I think I th have a feeling it has to do with a, a coronation and the return of the gods, you know, and um, you know the Mayan calendar was also another uh, auspicious sign because that ended. That didn't mean the destruction of the world. That meant the return of the gods of the pyramid builders. You now and so Obama would be basically the creation of Lucifer who would be, he would become the capstone in the pyramid. Therefore, it's extremely important. You know, we have, our, our, we associate pyramids with Egypt, but they're all over the world. There's like nine or 10,000 that they know of. Yeah, so this was, and this is a past civilization where they had nuclear wars. They had space travel. They had all this going on on the earth before this version of Yahweh's creation. And they, what happened to them? They all got, went extinct. They went to this, they became the aliens, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, so it's, it's a, um, but I do believe that God's word will be true, that, that somehow John's prophecy, John's revelation about the vengeance of God, you know, but remember when you're seeing the vengeance of God and the, the plea of come out of her and be separate or you'll be visited upon with her plagues. And even the servants and the lowliest among them will be eaten by the birds because they serve the beast. And if you take the mark, you take the chip, you will not be in the Lamb's book of life because you will be genetically basically not, you know, part of the creation anymore. And they're already advertising um, things like having a phone type chip in your head and you know, becoming somewhat bionic, somewhat electrified. Of They're already advertising the idea of, you know, they haven't implemented them, but showing how the, you know, the droid phones and the various phone commercials, how, you know, you can have this integrated in your head. They're showing chips in the head and the brain. You know, they want to put something there to, to affect you that you could have all your communication, all your records, everything you do. You could make, it could make you smarter. 
So people are going to want this chip. They're going to want to be smart. They're going to want to genetically alter themselves. I don't think they, it won't be like they don't know that there's going to be a, a, a genetic change. They're going to want the enhancement. Just like, right? So it's, it's going to be kind of um, probably the rage <laughs> of, uh, of getting uh, digitally, um, you know, they want, right, like you have a smartphone, a smart TV, they want to have a smart human. And you can then interact with your TV with the, uh, the technology, the, 